the Cabinet Secretary for Education, Julius Ogamba, Principal Secretary, Belio Kipsang, the outgoing Kesha Chairperson in Dimulikahi, and the incoming Mr. Willie Kuria, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Um, I am here first to deliver the statement on behalf of President William Ruto. So what I'm going to read is not my speech, but his speech. Uh, but time allowing, I'll add one or two things at the end of the remarks. But before I go into that, let me also take this opportunity to congratulate a number of you, those who are living after having served in various capacities and those who are incoming. Uh, I also want to congratulate Indimuli as he moves to a different stage and Willy Kuria comes in. Last but not least, let me also congratulate uh, the minister, my colleague Julius Gamba. Um, I watched him as Parliament was grilling him a few weeks ago, and I want to say congratulations on your appointment. Thank you. Let me also acknowledge uh, the Vice Chancellor, uh, Laba Nairo, who did make a presentation here. And also with me, I would like to acknowledge Madam Agnes Odiambo. She was the former controller of budget in Kenya. Uh, and now she schools me on matters of governance and public finance. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me proceed. I am delighted to join you for the 2024 International Confederation of Principles World Convention. It is a privilege for us to welcome you all to this convention, which is the second ICP gathering to be held in Africa and the first since the COVID-19 pandemic. Let me thank the ICP Council for choosing Kenya to host an event of this magnitude. This is a testimony to the important role that our country plays in the development of the education sector on the global stage. We are also proud that one of our own sons, Mr. Kai Indimuli, is representing Africa on the ICP global body. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the theme of this conference, Future Pathways for Learning and Learners, reflects the urgent need for us to reflect on how to position the education system in a rapidly evolving global environment. Education faces a multitude of challenges globally, particularly from the technological innovations, inclusivity, climate change, globalization changes in production systems, and shifting demographic trends. You have a responsibility to deliver quality education that responds to this new global context. Furthermore, you need to navigate the peculiar circumstances that your schools experience due to lack of adequate learning facilities, competent teachers, textbooks, parental support, and community engagement. These challenges define your roles as principals particularly in advancing the critical value of schools in shaping the conscience of society. You are entrusted with the responsibility of managing the school environment, which is the incubation center of knowledge and character development of young members of our society. A conducive learning environment enables the learners to acquire academic skills and learn the values and social competences 
that guide them throughout their lives. Your pivotal role in managing schools and shaping the future of learners demands a unique blend of visionary leadership, administrative acumen, and unwavering commitment. You need to cultivate a positive school culture and ensure the well-being and growth of both students and staff. Principals in secondary schools are instrumental in molding the youth who are just about 13 to 18 years old. At adolescence, learners require continuous guidance, mentorship, and coaching. Apart from delivering the curriculum, teachers shape the character of the students and subsequently prepare them to be useful citizens. Additionally, principals are the driving force behind the success of any educational institution. They provide leadership in resolving complex issues ranging from resource constraints to evolving educational policies with diverse and competing stakeholder interests. Here in Kenya, the government has continuously engaged principals and stakeholders in driving the transformation of our education sector. We proudly acknowledge the Kenya Secondary Schools Heads Association as a key player in secondary education in particular and in the entire education sector in general. Through the membership of various decision-making bodies, Kesha remains instrumental in the management of schools and formulation of critical education policies. Together with principals and other stakeholders, we have collectively made important national decisions that are shaping the future of Kenyans across the entire country. These include providing free basic education for all learners in public primary and secondary schools. Under this education model, the government provides capitation per learner to all schools. It also supplies textbooks and pays examination fees for all candidates. This learning model, which is being enhanced through the National Education Sector Strategic Plan for 2023 to 2027, to quality education, has lifted a huge burden off the shoulders of parents, guardians, and the community who are left to provide meals, uniforms, and personal items to students. Moreover, it has enhanced equity in education access, thus empowering students from lowest endowed backgrounds. We have also adopted a competency-based education system with the aim of having an engaged, empowered, and ethical citizenry. Our system of education now focuses on competencies such as communication and collaboration, critical thinking and problem solving, creativity and imagination, digital literacy, learning to learn, self-efficacy, and citizenship. We are particularly keen on preparations for transition of our learners from junior school to senior school as we face out our current education system that offers eight years in primary, four years in high school, and four years in university. Our new education system offers two years in pre-primary, six years in primary, three years in junior school, three in senior school, and three at university. The first cohort of students under the model will join grade 10 in 2026. The senior school will provide an opportunity for learners to pursue pathways of interest depending on their abilities and career choices. Collaboration between the school administration parents or guardians and the community is a cardinal pillar of our education system. Parental empowerment and engagement 
encourage parents and guardians to continuously engage in the administration of the development of their children. Learners are also encouraged to get involved in community affairs while school boards of management enable the community to participate in the affairs of schools in their neighborhood. We are also implementing comprehensive curriculum reforms that address global concerns and also empower every learner to achieve their potential. Another notable initiative is prioritizing investments in targeted programs that enhance access for learners with special needs. Through the community-driven initiatives, we are striving to clear the barriers that have long prevented these children from realizing their aspirations. Our dream is to see an education system that promotes diversity and inclusion, while driving economic and social transformation in line with the government's bottom-up economic transformation agenda and Kenya's Vision 2030. Along this education transformation journey, we have learned important lessons that we can share with you to enhance the outcomes of our deliberations here. These include the cardinal value of strategic leadership, which is necessary to ensure that educational institutions remain relevant, effective, and responsive to the needs of individuals, societies, and economies. Our collective duty is to explore imaginative approaches, discuss the future directions for learners and learning, and make resolutions with respect to the professional development of our colleagues through global perspectives. This forum therefore provides a unique opportunity for all participants to share their thoughts with a view of exploring ways of collaboration. We must not lose sight of the fundamental principle of equity that every child deserves the opportunity to succeed in their dreams. We hope that by leveraging on the diverse experiences and expertise of participants from around the globe, we shall drive positive change and ensure that our learners are sufficiently prepared to fit in the global environment. It is imperative for us to acknowledge the internal challenges facing the education sector in general, ranging from mismatch between skills offered in our school curricula to the expectations of the current global industrial and labor changing markets. I am confident that through your collective wisdom, dedication, and innovative spirit as leaders, you will convert challenges at your experience and your experience into opportunities for sustainable progress. The future of our nations rests squarely on our shoulders as education leaders. Let us share our thoughts and perspectives openly and make resolutions that would ensure every child, regardless of their background, has access to an education that will unlock their full potential. Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude by underlying, underlining the importance of collaborative and mutually supportive relationships with our communities that truly hold the key to our success. This will enable us to unleash the transformative power of education for the benefit of all our children and our citizens. I wish you fruitful deliberations for shaping the future of our education, anchored on our shared commitment to the African Union Agenda 2063 and the United Nations Sustainable Goals. Let me also encourage our visitors to take time after your meeting to explore the rich diversity of our Kenyan culture, parks, and beaches. You are assured of a memorable, magical Kenya experience. It is now my pleasure 
and honor to declare the 2024 International Confederation of Principals World Convention officially open. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, that was the statement by President William Ruto, who was destined to be the chief guest, but he assigned me to, to come in and uh, represent him. Um, but let me make just one or two points as I reflect on my own thoughts. Um, let me just pick up something that is agonizing us and uh, particularly those from the African continent. And I want to wear my hat now as a foreign minister. How do you handle education in a world of conflict? As we speak today, there are close to 100 million young people out of school in Africa. If you're looking at the conflicts in the Sahel region, right through the middle, and in other parts of the continent, we have over 100 million young boys and girls who are out of school. What will they become in the various stations that they are at at this point in time? We have seen that in Africa when there is conflict, a country can take even 40 to 50 years to recover. And even in our neighborhood here, in the Horn of Africa, where there has been con conflict, the countries are yet to fully recover. So, it seems that conflict is also helping us generate a lost generation. We are creating a lost generation. And therefore, as you deliberate, it might be useful to really interrogate this. How do we handle education in a world that is full of conflict? And what can we do to make sure that the future is not bleak? What happens to the values that I've talked about in this speech that we are supposed to inculcate? Are we doing that to the young people that uh, we are producing? The other point I just want to leave and share with you is that let us also take the issue of climate change very seriously. For Kenya, in the last few years, maybe the last two, we had a deliberating drought, the worst in 40 years, and then everything swung like a pendulum and the next thing, we had floods. And our estimate indicates, and this is data that I got from the Ministry of Education, that over 4,000 classrooms were destroyed by the floods during that, that period. I'm not even talking of the destruction to the bridges and access to schools to hospitals and what else was destroyed. But we must also now 
live with the reality that climate change is also becoming a serious hindrance to education. And therefore, uh, I would request that you apply your thoughts, your ideas, and your strategies to this particular challenge. Then there is the global economy. In Africa, we are 1.4 million people. 70% are young. But we do more trade with the rest of the world than Africa. Intra-African trade is just about 30%. But Africa's trade with the rest of the world constitutes 70%. I want to ask you, is it just infrastructure that is a barrier to this inter-Africa trade? Or is education also a hindrance? How fast are we training our young people to embrace integration amongst themselves. Where is the position of language? In our continent, are we training each other to communicate with each other or are we teaching Africans to communicate with the rest of the world and not communicate with them themselves. That again may be something you may want to ponder over. Then the issue of artificial intelligence. The $64 million question. Is it the dog that is wagging the tail or is it the tail that is wagging the dog? How are we harnessing artificial intelligence? Is it for the good of our society, our people? Or are we now beginning to face a scenario where artificial intelligence is also being used in the negative way? I'll speak for Kenya. Just a few weeks ago, we saw how the social media and artificial intelligence can be galvanized, mobilized, and weaponized to actually cast hatred amongst each other, to actually generate violent action amongst ourselves, generate destruction, because it happened, and maybe people felt that they were not responsible. So in our educational system and our practice, how do we inculcate the spirit of responsibility amongst the young people that we teach? But don't be fooled, because as we had our share, even developing nations did have their share. Not too long ago, one of the developing countries also saw a situation where this kind of attack or this kind of approach was used to rally chaos and hatred and destruction. So it is now another global problem. So let us answer the question. Is it the dog wagging the tail? or the tail wagging the dog. Finally, on a lighter note, when I was lighter, I used to play rugby. So when I saw the contingent from South Africa, and when I saw the contingent from New Zealand, I knew that uh, at the end of this month, there's going to be 
a big match <laughs> between the All Blacks and the Springboks. I think it's 30th of August. Yeah. Remember I said when I was lighter. I didn't say when I was younger. <laughs> when I was lighter, I used to play rugby. But um, uh, let me tell you that I will not tell you who I favor under the circumstances because uh, it would be awkward for me to do so. Uh, so I'll leave it at that. But once in a while, I practice the haka. <laughs> I will not do it today. <laughs> But next time I will be able to do it. But uh, when all is said and done, let me welcome all of you from wherever you did come from to join us and be part of this excellent day. I wish you successful deliberations and we definitely look forward to uh, reviewing and benefiting from the recommendations that and resolutions you'll make here. Pongezi sana, congratulations. And may you have the best of your time here. Asante sana.